Hey guys, I'm Cody, editor by Past Life Pro, and for this long OD tutorial, I thought I'd go into some useful tips from me to you on filming with long render distances in Minecraft, specifically 32 block render distance. To be able to even get an option to run this type of distance, you're first going to need Optifine installed and ready to go in your mods folder. But of course, if you want to also mess around with shaders and other mods like I will be doing, it'd be best if you followed along with the installation portion of the annotated video. Now there's no easy way for me to say this, but here it goes. If your computer can't even handle normal render distance with FPS higher than 20, then you might just crash it big time, but there's only one way to find out. But yeah, extreme render distance is pretty darn system intensive, so do be aware of that. So, for this example, I'm going to set up this shot, of which you've probably seen before from my cue to V5.0.6 cinematic showcase. If you're wondering about the shader I'm using, then this is actually the Seuss V8 Ultra, which is a much older version of Sonic Ether's shaders. Why am I using it? Well, it takes a whole lot less to run, so at least you guys can be watching something with around 30 frames. You can only imagine what it'd be like for me to actually film with more graphically intense shaders. Let's set up the shot. Tip 1. Don't just sit there. Extreme render distance won't load in all the way while your character is static, so it's best to make your way around the map and get everything you want rendered in. As you can see in the reference photo, I have quite a lot of land to render. So, tip 2, speed. I'd recommend getting the mod bullet time if anything for the simple fact that by adjusting your current speed, you can make yourself travel so much faster around the map. Without something like this, I'd probably take at least 15 minutes to get everything loaded. And yes, I've been there before. As I load up the map, you will definitely be seeing some times where the footage stops for like a second or two. Those are just lag spikes from having so many blocks rendered in at one time. So I guess I can call this a tip. Tip 3. When giant lag spikes do happen, it's best to just let your game sit there for a minute or so until it works through those chunks that are overwhelming the game. As you can see, I'm constantly moving back to my camera studio points to see how things look in the frame. Tip 4. Always double check how things look by going back to where you started or where you want the shot to take place from. No need to render more than you need to, right? Tip 5. Know how much land you can load in. Look at how my view is positioned. As I move backwards, I'm taking a look at the right side of the map to see if it will de-render or not. Knowing at what point you reach the end of how much you can load in is critical. This is so you don't accidentally lose a huge chunk of your scene. Ever wondered how to keep everything loaded in while you film? Tip 6. It's best to let your Minecraft just sit there for a minute or two on both points of travel, which is your beginning and your ending points. This makes it so if there is more land the game wants to load in, then it can do it while you wait, not while you film. A lot of people have asked about this, so I'm happy you all have an answer. Those were my tips on setting up extreme render distance for pretty much, now that I think about it, pre-filming. But hey, if you're also interested in learning about more technical aspects of filming, then these three videos will all have something unique to offer. If this tutorial was of any use to you, then do hit that like button. And before you go, don't forget to check out my channel for some more Minecraft tutorials, some pro quality cinematics, and a bunch of other videos that you shouldn't miss. Anyways, I'm Cody, and this is Past Life Pro, where creativity is always a part of my life, as it will be for yours. Alright, see you guys!